Ladies and gentlemen, we start the Tales from the Flipside Marker Report. All right, here we go. Um, it started with the famous Batman number one, page 28, only first appearance of the Joker. Uh, what the hell? One. Where's yeah. Dino to be pissed off? Yeah, that's oh. why we keep putting it up here, just to piss <laughs> off Dino. <laughs> hurt his soul. Yeah, Eight. hurt his soul. $8,400. Eight, $8, Jesus Christ. For a page. A one page. If you get it, though, you know? Yeah, if you were going to get one page, this would be up there, right? This would be up there. That's for sure. Would you just buy that or just buy some original art? <sighs> Maybe you already own the original art. Or just I think like, the people that are buying this, are they have the money to spend. God, if they got the money to spend, ah, oof. Maybe yeah. they should just go for a Batman one. Yeah, this is the, not the first page. This is page twenty-eight of Batman One. I mean, he's Batman. all up in the all up in the page. Yeah, it's oh, really yeah. Great page. You know, it's a yeah. great page. Yeah. So. Godly. All yeah, right. good stuff. Really good stuff. Uh, all right, next book we've got the beautiful, gorgeous Prince homage to Purple Rain, uh, a super ghost. Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow, number number 19, The Purple Rain, Retailer Incentive Cover. This book is so hard to find, and somebody got really lucky. Um, I uh, I hate going through marker reports sometimes because there's always one or two books that I'm like, what was I doing not bidding on this? And there's a lot of people regretting not bidding on this. It sold for $787, which was a steal steal is it a steal or is this book going down i think it's a steal i don't think this book can ever go down i think it's a steal uh it doesn't come to market that often i, I i've been trying to f not buy and this is going to sound terrible i've been trying to not buy cheaper books like books like i've been trying to just buy like really fucking expensive books um but, i don't blame and i don't blame you for that but this was like on my like watch list like gonna break my rule and spend a stack on it um yeah see there we go no yeah about half, it's, about half it's price. A tough nine eight also just getting a copy oh. is tough enough but tough to, to get nine eight that's like the those idw things they said they, they suck to press those good the, the way they're shipped they get a lot of color breaks on on a lot of their books so yeah tough tough nine eight can't even find tough to just get a copy, much less. Yeah, much I just want a copy. Yeah. yeah, this That's is one, one that the, I'd be happy to add raw. This is one of the few GI Joe books I do not own. One of the very few. All right, number next uh, book on the market report: Rick and Morty number one, the first print, a nine point eight CGC nine point eight, sold for just over a thousand dollars. So also Rick and down. Morty's still selling. Yeah, but also down. It is down, but we haven't. And, we, uh, I think we record, talked. That's a fucking tough nine eight, man. Yeah, and we talked about it last week. How we haven't been talking about Rick and Morty for a long time. Uh, I mean, this book uh, was the darling of speculation for a nice, nice chunk of time, and uh, all the f different prints. I think they went to six prints or something like that. The, the famous Royland variant, um, the one in the the limited to 50 variant the one in 250 variant whatever it uh was crazy for a while good stuff next book i still love that show can you dude, fucking believe this dude this is Woo! all three copies though all three copies one two and three cgc 9.8 canadian, and canadian news. price variants yeah yeah but god damn yeah, I think that's garbage. I agree did with you, you uh, Mercenot. Did you uh, you guys watch the movie? Yes, it was great. It, I mean, like, sincerely, when it ended, I was like, are you fucking kidding me? I, I don't. I have to wait for more? This is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, it was good stuff. Um, I Dune stuff is really expensive right now. The books are expensive. The, uh, what is it, Argon, uh, Argyle Magazine, I can't remember. Um, they're oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, pulp. you can't, yeah, you can't even fucking buy it anymore. It pisses me the fuck off. Uh, because I, I like a jack off, waited around. I got in too late before or it got hot, tried to buy one, missed it, and then it just went gangbusters expensive. I was like, oh, well, I'll wait. The prices came down, and I'm again stingy, greedy, cheap, call it what you like. 
And I'm like, ooh, perfect. And now there are none for sale. I'm like, fuck. So if, if you know what I'm talking about, you understood that whole dissertation. If you didn't, I'm sorry. But I'm not telling you until after I have some. Next book on the list, Dolphin. The dol- famous first Dolphin book, Showcase 79. Mm, that's, that's a deal. Pretty, that's cheap. Yeah, that looks real cheap. CGC 9.0 for $616. Yeah, that does seem cheap. Classic book that uh, everybody knew of for years. Maybe didn't want, but this is a book everybody's known about for a long time. Next book, America number two, CGC 9.8, <laughs> the Arthur Adams one in 50 variant, sold for $734 on 27 bids. Um, one of the few Art Adams books that I don't like, it just looks weird to me, but I know this is a beloved America Chavez book. Seven hundred and thirty-four dollars. What do you guys think? It's Chavez. <laughs> I said it's pronounced Chavez. Isn't that what I said? Chavez. Chavez. So Brian's got to eat some more of those bombuelos, and he'll get it. He's like America Bonelos? Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> I'm decent just buy. Tough to find. Yeah, very tough to find. Um, I remember. When this uh, original art was for sale, was how much did sale. that go for? I can't remember. Uh, I just remember when it was for sale and it was yeah. out of my price range. I want to say it was like eight grand. I think they wanted right. Uh, was that? Holy was crap! That? Something like that. So, all right. Next book. Love this book. Always love this book. X Men number thirty seven, the uh, foil oh, edition. Uh, I love all these Phalanx books, right? Um, yeah, but is that fucking insane? Yeah. Is it, bucks, bro. It's not even the first appearance of Blink. It's the death of Blink. How limited edition is that? It's not super limited. <laughs> I, is that? I, I, I actually think that there's that's more the, of that one than there is the the non. Yeah, that's the fucking stupidest thing I've ever seen. The I like the uh, the red one. That's like you know what I mean, like the the lower grade of, of these '90s books, the Don Deluxe versions, not the fucking foils. This makes no sense. I'd love to see if that actually got paid. 30 bits, and, bro. Yeah, but somebody could have like a box of them and just be generating this shit. I hate to be the guy who's like, fake sale. But uh, if you're the person who won this, I, I would like to sell you some copies of this book. Holla <laughs> at your boy. I bet Same. you don't have any, though, because why would you? That's a good fucking point. I don't yeah. know. I got a yeah. lot of I got a lot of boxes of just trash. <laughs> Sincerely, yeah. did. Yeah. I mean, yeah. next book. Uh, love this book. Oh, yeah. Always oh. love this book. Got a great story about Gru. This is Destroyer Duck number one from 1982. CGC 9.8. First appearance Jeez. of Gru the Wander, and also just as important in my opinion, one of the books to uh, kind of protest all the bullshit that was going on um, at Marvel at the time with Howard the Duck. Uh, of course, you know, they were just pulling some major bullshit on the creator of that character. So he said, all right, I'm going to go over and uh, do it at Eclipse and have a bunch of other artists help me do some cool stuff. So he did Destroyer Duck. And of course, there's a I think that's a Neil Adams cover, right? Is that a Neil Adams is, cover? Is right? that Kirby? That's not is it Kirby. Kirby? I, I can't on. remember. They had somebody do the cover special for this book. And uh, but they also, of course, had uh, the first grew the wanderer in that. And um, a lot of people picked this up for that reason. I remember being a kid and so mad at my uncle because I was over at my grandparents' house one time, and my grandparents were like, Yeah, you're all your uncle's comic books are over there. And I went to look at them, they were all fucking grew. I was like, Who reads grew comics back in the day? Hey, but. Yep. Uh, listen, a buddy of mine, um, this is a long time ago, he had a short box filled with Gru, and See, he just it. left them outside because he couldn't bring himself to just bring them inside the house because he just <laughs> he just didn't care. Yeah, it's Gru. Funny. Yeah, it was crazy. But people read them. Like, they, they, they thought that shit was funny back then. I mean, it Can was we long, long running. enough for Gru to have a second life? Well, they just got optioned. They're, they optioned Gru. Oh my God! Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Hell yeah, Sergio! Good shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sergio Aragonis, uh, is that how you say it? Yeah, you know? yeah. Aragonis, um, Sergio Aragonis. 
that he's a badass uh, OG in comics, Mad Magazine, all that fun stuff. Great story about him coming over to the United States to work for Mad Magazine. Go look that up. A lot of fun. Yeah, Chad Cave says, uh, you fuckers can't tell the difference between Neil Adams and Jack Kirby. Yeah, man, there's a lot of stuff going in my head. I do 10 podcasts a week, bro. Um, next huh? book on the list, Journey into Mystery number 83, a raw copy that's a strong fucking sale for a yeah. book that is fucked up i love how it says first appearance of korg too <laughs> i know right they got an extra 12 bucks for that i mean i don't know what that's gonna look like in a slab um and i i don't know if it it looks like it has water damage it looks greasy don't it yeah, yeah it's but uh dude um, strong fucking sale hey, it's and, the first appearance of thor I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, there's, there's worse things to spend four grand on. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice. It's one. beautiful. Nice book to spend four grand on. You have the pick mm. of the bag. This is uh, one of my all-time favorites. Warrior magazine. Yeah, of dude, course. how fucking awesome is that? You get all yeah. twenty-five. Yeah, and they look to be high grade from uh, that picture at least the number one is high grade, which is very hard to warrior find warrior magazine number one the highest on gpa is like a nine four <laughs> or like a nine two or something yeah. or i'm sorry on the cgc census it's like highest graded because my buddy had highest graded for a while and i was like don't fucking sell it no, so for those it. of you guys that don't know warrior magazine is from the uk and has the a lot of early creator uh, early uh um content from alan moore brian bolin neil gaiman it's got uh warrior number one has the first appearance of v for vendetta and first appearance of miracle man right so a lot of big books in this run and that uh, v for vendetta mass cover is great yeah so, hell yeah and it's yeah. cheap yeah i think there's like two people that like it me and you yeah so keep your eye out for this one. Four, less than 400 bucks for the whole run is crazy. I, I think that Warrior Someone Number 1 should be a $500 plus book itself. Uh, in so this hard grade, to find a, it should be a stack. It's hard to find in any grade. Yeah, Absolutely. Every copy grade. I've ever got, I had to get from another country, except for I was able to finagle one off a dude who found like a rack of them in like a warehouse find. Um, and I still have that one copy because it's the nicest copy I've ever seen. And usually the ones you buy from out of the country never come in a bag and board, ever. No, they're all fucked up. At, same yeah. with um, 2008 uh, Tank Girl. Tank Girl, yep, the Tank Girl uh, stuff. Well, I forget yeah. the name of that, the magazine that it is, but deadline. it's always Deadline. deadline yeah, because yeah. I learned about the other Near Deadline myths. looking for um, Deadline 1. There's like the, the great, the silver dude. Yep. It's like, what the fuck is this? A song? <laughs> yeah, it's like some trash '90s book. <laughs> On to the next one. Of course, we've talked about Gru. We got to talk about Usagi Ujimbo. Beautiful, beautiful copy of Usagi Ujimbo number one, a CGC nine point eight, sold for almost fifteen hundred dollars. I love to see this book getting some love. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next so. book, Edge of Spider Verse number two, the Greg Land variant, Jeez. CGC nine point six, sold for thirty two hundred. So, appearance. what do you guys think about one. the disparity between uh, Edge of Spider Verse and Ultimate Fallout Four? Because it... we don't get a ton of uh, Spider Gwen stuff yet, maybe. Right. I mean, but like, it, I remember when they were the same price. And then I remember when it was like, oh, well, this book will catch up. And now they're on two fucking different planets. And I want to know if they'll ever, I mean, is there ever going to be a correction? Or hell no. Are you, are you just talking about the variant? Both. The, the, the main uh, the main yeah, ratio variant? Well, the ratio variant or the uh, regular cover. I mean, just mm. major disparity. And I think I nine eighths of the first print are closer, are closer than they've been in a long time. Because I think the uh, Spider Verse is up, and I think uh, the mile, the Ultimate Fallout Four, you know, I think it's closer to you know twenty six or twenty seven as it compared to when it was like thirty two, thirty three. And I and I think I think it's like isn't isn't Spider Verse two like uh like about two thousand? Yeah, so I thought it was about a two K book. 
Yeah, so they're they're a little closer. And it's funny because it was all out, out the gate that was stronger than Ultimate Fallout Four had ever been or ever was. It was a hell you know? of a lot. It is a hell of a lot rarer book. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, and especially especially a lot of those you know the later printings of this of this <clears> one. <throat> those probably uh, uh, some of those I think I I moved on from too early. But yeah, I think it's I don't know it's it's a pretty pretty decent thing to invest in. Um, Thirty two hundred sounds like a it's probably a pretty decent price for for uh, for nine six. You know, if I'm paying over three thousand for something, usually though I'm trying to figure out how to get a nine eight. Wow. <laughs> um, something kind of interesting uh, didn't, and I might be wrong about this, but uh, I see. Uh, Gore said that uh, Neil Gaiman didn't work on Warrior. I think he might have wrote into the letter column on that um, that uh, special issue they did. Oh no shit! Yeah, uh huh. I cool. think he wrote into the letter column on that uh, special Warrior special science. Was it science special or something like that? Anyways, Jesus Christ. Next book. Number 13, or next book on the list, Marvel Premiere number 10, CGC 9.2. That's a fucking tough book in high grade. Yeah. Wow. I got got a lot of copies of that book, and I do not have any that are fucking real, real high grade. Interesting. Interesting. Um, So the Shumagorath uh, spec here, obviously, is that this is the main villain for uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Um that sort of like uh what do you, what, uh, what's the the uh fucking uh shame on me um there's some reservations that it won't be the actual villain that there were so many rewrites and reshoots on the film that uh the doctor strange sequel is going to be a different film um, I think that's the only reason that this book hasn't gone completely bananas, but um, we'll see. Very cool. Next book, all new Ghost Rider number one from twenty fourteen. There's another one I was watching. Close the trad trad more one in fifty variant. Of course, first appearance of Robbie Reyes. That's a good buy. Yeah, love this book. Good book. Sold for uh, just under 400 bucks raw. All right, next one. There's your ultimate Fallout 4 Jurgevic variant. Hmm. The 9.6 SS sold for hmm. just under 10 grand. Did you guys think that was a good deal? 9.8 blue labels cracked up $30,000 on a heritage auction recently. I get that there's a discount for signed books. Um, but it's a demonstration of a down market. I don't know if I would get that book autoed. You know what I mean? I wouldn't consider it. I don't get yeah. any fucking books autoed, but yeah, I don't know why not. I, I did just a rare, rare fanboy book or something like that. Like I don't yeah. bother to SS that shit. Mm-mm. That's a, is that a Jim Shooter variant? I mean, Jim Shooter signature. So no, it like... it's been, it's been, it's been, no, but it looks uh, like Sarah it. Ah. And Clayton Crane, and also it kind of sucks, like, because his sig is so nice, you can barely see it over that purple bicep there, and uh, it and it's in black, so it doesn't just doesn't pop. Ugh. If it was in silver like that Pacelli, that would look pretty. That would look pretty cool there. Yeah, we we were talking about on the Modern Mayhem, like, you should if you're going to pay all this money to these artists and writers for signing, you should be able to pick the fucking color. I got in a fight with a Donny Cates because he didn't want to do a, a a Venom Green, and so I, I I'll send it to you, Sean. Just the the back and forth with me and Cates, but um, it's <laughs> fucking stupid, man. You know, like you're paying like fifty, eighty, hundred dollars, and and you can't and you can't pick the fucking color you want them to sign it's fucking sick. and then you get something like that where he, the guy the moron signs in black where you can't even see the city it uh, yeah it almost <laughs> that sucks i mean it also, if I, it, also if, looks if, like a little kid tried to draw a dong on him on the- <laughs> i mean like you know if you're going to have Donny Cage scribble all over your book at least you can get the color you want on it you know 
Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. I did uh I did for uh Todd McFarlane and Stan Lee and I had them do the both do my Spider Man three hundred and I got them uh was able to get them both to use silver. Oh really? Oh mm-hmm. Yeah, try, uh, Todd had, try, try Todd getting Donny Cates to sign in silver, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Todd Todd had his uh his uh his own his own set there of yeah. of colors and stuff, and actually asked, and then uh um I had the silver pen with me for uh stand to use. Mm. So was- now, let me ask you guys this: If this book signed by Crane and Pacelli, and then you managed to get it signed by Dejurovac and Bendis. That, is I mean, all that, forgiven? Is all forgiven at that point? <laughs> like, I mean, but, I mean, it it it'd be kind of cool. I, I'd be it'd be better. I'd rather have all at that point. But fuck it, might as well get all four. That's what I'm saying. The I mean, look, I'm not a, a signature series up. person at all. Yeah. But uh, when you start seeing like, oh, well, this book was signed by like four, five, six different people, I'm like, oh, all right, well, that's fucking cool. That's my one exception to signature series. Not that I have the patience for it, just that when I see people who've done it, I'm like, that's strong. Yeah, I'm more like I'd be more likely to um to send it in for an investment, like the CGC stuff and the celebrity stuff, if I thought I had the right books. Um, rather than uh than, you know, something like that, rather than wait in line myself. Yeah. But it, I mean, I, I, it's what it is. I mean, it's you know, it's comic books. It's all it's our celebrities. It's our it's our playground. So yeah, you know, there's people that love it, and we couldn't where we'd be without them. You know. Amen. Amen. All right, next book. Comic Con Superman Son of Cal L, number one. I didn't know about this. Fuck Did you guys I know still don't this? know about it. Yeah. What is this? Is this from uh, NYCC? I don't know much about this. Uh, chat, let us know. It's if a you fucking guys know. dope looking cover, though. It is. It is. When and, when did it end? It says Comic Con. It could have been because the fake SDCC was last week uh, or the mini SDCC. Yeah, yeah. But it yeah. would that it would have had to have been a quick, um, like a twenty four hour auction, maybe three day if they got it on. Was that Jock, Jock cover? Jock? Yeah. yeah, Jock did that. Yeah. Yep. See, I fucked dude. He's a stud. Yeah, I, I like the cover. Yeah, Absolutely. and this issue was one of the best Superman stories ever. In this, in, in my opinion, in this issue, um, there's this part where Superman and and John Kent, are, you're, you're, you, John Kent knows that Superman is going to go away for a long time and might never come back, and it's just a really cool storyline about him and his dad, and you know, uh, John knowing that. So, really, really good storyline in this issue one. Um, two hundred eighty dollars raw too, uh, and it Christ. looks like it doesn't look like it's in the greatest condition. On I was gonna day. say, what the fuck? There's a yeah, fingerprint tw- in the top. top yeah, two eighty, they man. smashed it on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Twenty twenty one NYCC exclusive. Yeah. There you go. All right. Yeah. Next book, uh, a torn crazy. in half cover. Batman 181. Woo! I mean, it, yeah, I'm I'm thinking about the number of uh, 181s that I've passed up that were fucked up, but they sure as hell were complete. Yeah, but this had the pinup in it, so oh, they're just gonna. Uh, I see what happened. Just yeah, buying the pinup. Yeah, they, uh-huh. they paid two fifty five for the pinup. That's not all bad, man. Whoever cut it is pretty good with the scissors. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I wonder if it was maybe a remaindered copy and they fixed it, or like so it didn't look as bad. That's bad. Or something. That's a yeah. great point. That's a great point. All right, uh, next book. There's your Marvel hey. Spotlight number five, a two point a CGC two point sold for eight hundred and sixty one dollars. TJ, uh, in case you were worried, we have provided you with this week in Ghost Rider. Yeah, there you go, TJ. <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's, I that's passed one up. of my favorite covers of all time, man. I'm so mad at passing up, uh, I think, a 7.5 for a thousand bucks. What? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my so God. So mad at that. Dude. So mad at that. Uh, next book 
I've never seen this. Sands of the South Pacific, number one from 1953. Ooh. Great cover. Ooh. That she is a, a great She cover. got a knife in her hand. Didn't she? Ooh, yeah. she's going hard. She's about to go hard. Yeah. And uh, $227 <laughs> on this. I think that was a great buy. It has a stamp on it, too, which is nice. It's a nice book. Yeah. Definitely I like nice. it. Next book, here we go. G.I. Joe, Real American Hero number one, the direct copy, CGC mm. 9.8, sold for 1400 bucks. All wow. Day. All day. What a great All book. Day. Love it. That was my first comic book. Really? That's awesome. It's great. I think G.I. Joe was a lot of our inroads into comics that for us that are, you know, late 30s, early 40s. Uh, mid 40 ages you know gi joe is such a big part of our lives as kids Uh, next one we've got x-men number 12 a cgc 9.4 first juggernaut sold for just under 14k holy crap yeah Yeah. it's amazing to me that books that old are that nice and that they've survived like who was the fucking psychopath that had this comic i don't know that's a great book, man. They're not a psychopath for owning this one. No, yeah, for like, taking care of it. Yeah, but for not like fucking just reading. Seventy years like, like that. You know what I mean? Like, hey, promise collection, baby. Mom, <laughs> keep your hands off my X Men books. Like I, yeah. They probably got toys still in their package too. Yeah. <laughs> Next book. Here we go. Ooh. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. Star Wars number 42, CGC 9.8. First Boba Fett sold for $3,300. I'm I'm sitting on a raw, and and I'm going to send it in, and it's it's beautiful. Gorgy, for real? Dude, (laughs) it's still in the press, bro. (laughs) I'm, I'm wondering, like, do you just slab up every copy of this now? I mean, Fuck yeah. Like I'm talking like three fives and shit like yeah. that. Absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I, you you'll get the more bang for your buck, you know? It's twenty dollars yeah. to slab it, you know. And you thanks to Hive Comics for, for sending one. There's a uh five oh or five five in the auction, but it looks clean. Wow. Right. I didn't I didn't take like a long time to go through. I didn't do you know, bright light in the corners or anything like that. But I was like, holy shit, this this is nice, so uh, t- tomorrow, sometime after four. I don't think it'll be one of the first books I run, to tell you that. <laughs> Doc Joe. Yeah, is that a trade you would make? First, uh, Clone Clone Wars number one, 9.8 for Star Wars 42, 9.8. Who, who gets a, a better feeling, deal? I got a feeling Phil's going to fucking take him up on that one. Phil likes Ahsoka. Oof. Yeah, I'm, I'm a Boba Fett guy. Uh, I mean, I've... I've literally there's a, a generational divide guy. there that's a that's a cool generational divide yeah which right? would you what do you, what do you think is a better investment which nine eight they're about the same price right <sighs> i think they're both pretty similar man i'll be honest i like uh, she older, might she I might like be the, books, but i i i i probably couldn't pass up having this in a nine eight um just because of because of that reason and because I'm a fan of putting it in there, but like but right is that it's, not the modern Star Wars key, like the I, Ahsoka? Because I don't really consider this really modern. You know what I mean? I, I yeah, I think your analysis is spot on begrudgingly. I, I I if you fucking put a gun to my head, my money's probably on Ahsoka. Yeah, like if I had yeah, I mean I'm I'm gonna choose Boba for myself because Amen. you know, it'll be fair enough. But that's how other people if it's the Star Wars Hulk one eighty one right here. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean that's a good comparison. But like, if that show is, is so much as a hit, where does this book go? Like, if people like it's a hit, and then they go season two because well, well, there's a major newsstand dis- or newsstand disparity. Remember that the oh, newsstand yeah. nine eight sells for fucking like five k almost. I think. I sold a a sixty seven nine eight newsstand for like three twenty five. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That hurts. MCS auction back in the day. Wow. Right, Made money, go. but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Amazing Spider Man number three hundred, a CGC nine point eight, sold for six thousand dollars. Bro, lock the fuck in. 
right? I mean, and here's my question. Will the 9.6 jump to 3K? Because the 9.8 is was at 5, and I was and it was like, is it going to go up? Is it going to go up? Now it's at 6, two weeks in a row. Rock solid. Bro, they should have put the Venom label on that book, bro. Not the Spidey label. Uh, they don't always have them all available. Yeah. I noticed. It's annoying. Quit sticking yeah. up for them, Sean. <laughs> <I'm just kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true though they fucking uh they just lock them yeah is this one coming down i don't know <laughs> That's dumb, <laughs> it's climbing like spidey bro <laughs> fast I, I never thought it would fucking hit this height god uh, man and it, you know it is down right isn't that a little low? i thought it was yeah. getting this was like a seven thousand eight thousand dollar book was. for a period of time it was but you know, a little bit of fluctuation is just you know that's not the way, it's that's the, way the world works. Yeah, it's not like if I if, if I had nine eight, I wouldn't sell it. Fuck no, man. Mm-mm. All right, next book: Amazing Spider-Man number one ninety four, first appearance of Black Cat, CGC nine point eight, sold for forty five hundred dollars. Wow, makes that makes that Venom look cheap, right? All right, that's yeah, crazy. Maybe. Tougher, there's got to be less. Tougher book. Less tougher, tougher book. But goddamn, dude. It's gotta Who be cares about Black Cat. For uh, yeah, but I just it's gotta be I fifteen years older. J. Scott Campbell fans. That's about it. <laughs> right. Easier exactly yeah. But you know, print run. Oh. And tough all black front, Jesus Christ. All right, next book. X Men 107, first appearance Speaking of the Star of tough Jam. Nine eights. Get out of here. Holy fuck, is that a tough nine eight? <laughs> Dude. Okay, by the 300. All right, so this fucking this motherfucker here has a production uh flaw over top of that bottom staple on like every copy I've ever had ever. It's always been like three, four thousand dollars. This is fucking insane. Man, I, I can, never thought it would hit this fucking high. I I can think of some better things to buy than than this. A this nine book, six bro. is like nine hundred bucks. Ugh. <laughs> oh man, I like uh, David. Uh, oh, what's his name? Samuelson. Six point five k too much says David Samuelson. Yeah. JJ says for Star Jammers though. I, dude, it's it's always been a really fucking expensive book. I remember, I, I, I remember because I've had ones that like I thought were nine eight candidates, and uh, I I remember like getting nine sixes and just being fucking irate. And, the uh, very first big book that I ever bought as a kid, like on the wall book, was and I don't know if you guys remember, but it was a big book at the time. Was that Star Jammers X Men two issues uh, set? And I remember I bought that. I think I paid like, you know, like 20 bucks for it, thinking I was like super special. I don't think you could give those books away now. (laughs) Next book on the list. Submariner number one, CGC 8.5. Sold for just under $1,100. So love this cover. Yeah, goodbye. You can get the uh, Astonishing Tales version, right? The the reprint that came out a couple years later. Get one of those for much cheaper. Next book. Here we go. Amazing hmm. Fantasy f- 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 15. Dude, there were two AF-15s in no reserve auctions on fucking eBay this week. Uh, so the next person is like, it's not a down market. Like, don't be a fucking crybaby. It's a down market and people are selling shit on eBay that they would never otherwise fucking sell. And it's awesome. There are buying opportunities everywhere. Yeah. Get excited. Welcome to fucking buying season. It's winter. A 2.5 sold for $29,000. Dude, yeah. back in, like, I think it was 2017, 2018, I was going to buy a 2.5 for like seven, seven and a half, eight grand, something like that. And I can't believe I didn't pull the fucking trigger. It was the guy selling here local. Oh, man. We all have those stories. Dude. I remember when I first got back into comics and looking at the X Men ones and Amazing Fantasy 15s, and they were achievable. Yeah. 
Uh, Darede- Daredevil one. I I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger on that shit. New Mutants number ninety eight, CGC nine point eight. Sold for eighteen hundred dollars, thirty two bids. I never thought I'd see this ever in my entire fucking life ever. Why is that? Here, here I mean, so many of them. Because I collected comics fucking when I was a little kid, like the rest of you fuckers. Like I just remember, you know, uh, eighty seven was the book, not ninety eight. You know, fuck Todd or fuck uh, Rob Liefeld and his stupid <laughs> fucking Deadpool. It wasn't till. Like, uh, I got older and Joe uh, Kelly created Joe Deadpool Kelly and, and Fabian yeah. Nicieza, or however you say his last well, name. Nicieza was on this book, too. Yeah, yeah, but he started that fucking like he wrote that run where he started talking to himself. I thought right? that was Joe Kelly. I think it was Could be wrong. yeah, uh, yeah, irrespective this... of the fucking same. The point is, I, I just I, even, you know, then they made him slapsticky. I just never thought. I, I never thought we'd see this, and uh, it's cool. This is down two, though, right? Yeah, uh, not for a direct market. I about... thought those were up at like over two grand at one. I thought time. they were closer to three, right? Now. I was uh, the the, the newsstands were closer to three. Newsstands got a, a substantial uh, price bump. Um, I mean, this book has been like yo yo of the century. If you were smart and bought. Nine eights of uh, New Mutants ninety eight when they were down at like fucking nine hundred bucks. Hats off to you. You're a fucking genius. Um, I got a lot of friends who think he's you know Ryan Reynolds was never gonna make another Deadpool movie. I pray to God they're wrong. Oh, they're wrong. And I really liked uh, Free Guy. I thought it was fucking great. If you get a chance, it's, it's worth watching. Oh, yeah, Deadpool, Deadpool's gonna be back, dude. I would have. I hundred percent. If I walked into a store. I haven't been paying as much attention to uh, eBay lately. Um, I, if I walked into a store and I was sitting there at 1825, I'd be figuring out a way to walk out with it, you know, for, yep. for that price. Yep. I, don't, I, don't, I think it's just a good, uh, it's a good buy. It looks yeah, like the, uh, the, the gun, Deadpool's gun, it looks like it jizzed and then the gravity <laughs> just kind of turned off and is just kind of floating up. It's, it's like a, it's like a McFarlane, the spaghetti, McFarlane spaghetti web. <laughs> I love What's that Domino. Man? I always like Domino on this. Yeah, Domino is cool. Yeah, the fake Domino, right? Well, actually, the, yeah, 1825 looks like about looks like about right. It wasn't 2000. It's been floating around that for the whole year. So I'm off a little, but I still don't think that's a terrible investment. Oh, okay, yeah. no, in May it was around 2800, and it's been a three thousand dollar sale. Hmm. You know, I don't know. Those those could have been those could have been new stands or something like that. But well, at least this one doesn't have Robbie L. All but the twenty twenty the twenty twenty high on that book was thirteen hundred, and in twenty nineteen is a thousand eighty. I bought a Mark Jewelers variant, bro. <laughs> Let's. I don't know if they list the MGM. I think they That's do. That's the ultimate find, right? Yeah, nine, nine, or, I mean, nine, a Mark Jewelers variant, which is a yeah ninety eight ninety eight fifty was the last Mark Jewelers sell. Wow, and then in and then in twenty twenty it was twenty one sixty two. Wow. So yeah, that's pretty good. And then those are the only those are the only ones uh, that uh, the GPA recognizes at least in nine eight. I didn't look anything past nine eight. Oh, they do separate newsstands. So yeah, it is the newsstands are thirty five hundred. Next this. crazy book is this one: Amazing wow. Spider Man number twenty. What is the? That? I'll probably the, never own it. What is this? Bro. The I don't even know how to say that. It's it it's was, the, it's like European soccer clothing. Yep, it's like uh, it's a fucking uh, unique. It like a, yeah, it was like a special uh, event fucking uh, like book. You know what I mean? Um, no, I don't know what you mean. I have no idea. I've never seen. So, uh, if you want the full story, uh, check out cover price. Matt Devos, who hit me to uh, this book forever and ever ago. There's only two that are on the. Uh, the uh census i forgot um to look up the uh the story let me see if i can fucking uh run it real quick bear with me it's crazy the buildings are inverted just like uh some of the scenes in the movie yeah the artist polan is um He's like a, a, a renowned artist. That's the the big uh, takeaway from this. 
Um, let me see if I can read. That's a, that's a little too avant-garde for my taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Bear with me. I'll, I'll read you uh, the description from our buddy Matt. Who's very smart. All right. Uh, Jason Pullen is considered one of New York's quirkiest and most prolific artists. Uh, the quirk drawing artist's goal was to draw every person in New York. While ambitious, he drew hundreds of New Yorkers every day. His work was featured in the New Yorker, the New York Times, and multiple art galleries. Uniqlo, a Japanese casual wear designer, manufacturer, and retailer located in major cities across the U.S., formed a unique partnership with Poland and Marvel, and they created uh, Marvel art featuring the Marvel logo and his version of Spider-Man. Um, the long and the short of it is that with the purchase of two graphic t-shirts, you could also order one of these exclusive comics. Good fucking luck uh, getting wow. one. Shout out to our boy Matt DeVoe. And uh, yeah, I'd like to get my hands on one, but that's a that cool probably book. Can happen. Yeah, yeah, fucking love super it. Cool, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, next one: Vengeance number one, the one in fifteen <laughs> auto variant. Fifteen hundred bucks raw. Holy crap! Goodbye. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it it, it didn't look like a nine eight, but uh, if it is, boy, that's a great fucking buy. And, and it might be. I mean, I don't know. It's hard to tell from these pictures. I sure as shit looked at it. Uh, that I, I sold a 9.6 for about that much, which is probably about half of what uh, it would have sold for today. So, and this is probably a 9.6. Yeah, I agree with leg. Goodbye. Yeah, especially if it's 9.6. Somewhere there. I, I think, I, I don't think it's a 9.8, but um, it's a fucking nice copy. Yeah. Next book, Darth Vader number three, the LaRocca variant. I was on the variant. phone with uh, McClay when this ticked down um, and Drew. And I was like, I'm going to fucking buy it. I'm going to fucking buy it. I'm going to buy it. Don't be a pussy. I'm going to buy it. And then it jumped from like 1200 to 1900 and I clearly got outbid. <laughs> and 1900 is still a little low. This yep. is a 2000 Absolutely. plus book. So. In person, a twenty three hundred dollar book, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good buy. Yeah, Andy, Comic Man Andy bought one of these for twenty two or twenty three hundred at uh, Baltimore. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't uh, know what he paid. Yeah. All right, let's get into the rest of the market report. This is fun. Who doesn't love the USS flag? How about just Keel Hall, the figure that came with the USS flag wow. with his gun? Sold for $112 loose. Um, yeah, tough figure. You can also find the general flag figure that sold uh, on card this last week for a grip, too. But uh, I like Keel Hall. Uh, you know, I never owned a, a true USS flag. I had parts and pieces forever. I always thought I would put one together, but I never got to put a full one together. One of these days, I'll walk into a garage sale and find one in the box for like 50 bucks you watch it's gonna happen I'm, I'm putting that into the world uh next one i love python patrol i own a bunch of python patrol carded figures i do own one of these love the G version one vipers i love all the different uh, versions of version one vipers love the python patrol ones love the crimson ones uh love the fuchsia ones love the one that comes on the um, bubble bobble Fig I mean, there's so many different versions of the Gen 1 Vipers, and it's such a great character with the uh, shotgun. Um, yeah, just good stuff. Love this character. Love the backpack. Love the weapon. Love everything about this. This and the Crimson Guard, I thought, were just such great design characters. And then when they came out with them with Python Patrol, I was in. I love the coloring on Python Patrol figures. Um, I know a lot of people hate Tiger Force, but I, I love Tiger Force Flint. And... Uh, Loved how they both came out the same time. I was in big time on these, but $130. Tiger for Carter Force one. Flint. Tiger Force. So that at the same time they came out with Python Patrol for Cobra, they came out with Tiger Force for G.I. Joe. And they just recolored figures, right? Oh, okay. So Flint and Tiger Force to me always looked better than the regular Flint. I gotcha. But, uh, all right. Uh next. How about this one? You guys remember this one? The talk boy okay, home alone. So this is interesting. I I saw one of these that was super cheap, 
it's apparently only the someone look let me rephrase that someone showed me um uh, one of these because what the fuck do i know but i think it's only the deluxe one that sells for major money and the one that's not deluxe i think you can steal for like lots cheaper and i don't know why keep hmm. the change you filthy animal <laughs> <laughs> yeah, i love this yeah man. do you know do you know the answer to that brian i don't this is the first time i've seen this i saw a talk boy uh, that I almost put on the market report last week, but then uh, I didn't. And yeah, this one sold for just too much to not put it on. Yeah, if somebody knows the answer to the, that, if they're actually, if someone just stole a non deluxe version or if the deluxe version sells for like a major premium, would they put that in the comments? Or, um, I'd appreciate it because I'm fascinated but confused by toys. Uh, next one on the list. I love Shockwave. I love the blue Shockwave. Love the Night Force Shockwave better. Holy crap. But uh, this is one of my all-time favorite figures. This sold carded for $513, which is bonkers. Bonkers, man. I remember when they were... Oh, God, I love this figure. Love the art for this figure, too, with the little um, silencer on the gun. Yeah. Yeah, great figure. It had the knife that went in the backpack. Um... The light blue is kind of crazy, but killer, killer figure. How about this one, you guys? Uh, we talked about the India Fun School figures uh, last week, I believe. This is an India Fun School beachhead with different coloring where they colored beachheads. Uh, uh, what do they call that? Um, the Bok. Uh, what do they call the, those masks? The Bakala or? Uh, Balaclava. Balaclava. Thank you. The, they what? colored the Bellaclava red and his uh, vest white or, or yellow. Um, that's how you know. But one bid for $2,500. Whoa. Yeah. That's crazy. All right. We've got some more G.I. Joe stuff here. I love Zartan. Ooh. I love the color-changing Zartan. This is from the PulseCon 2021 exclusive. Wow. Somebody sold theirs for 105 bucks. Dude, that's fucking badass. Dude. Isn't it? Super cool, man. Super cool. All right. I showed you this figure last week. The wow. Frome, uh, the Vix, Vlix Frome figure. This wow. is the glass light one. I remember I told you that different figures created in different countries. I think Brazil was glass light. I think Palatoy was Brit, England. And then there's also a Lindy, Lindy something. And I can't remember where that's from. God damn. But yeah, but the glass light figure of this sold for three grand loose, no coin, no nothing, just the figure, Jesus. 40 bids. <laughs> that's fucking bananas. Yeah. All right. How about a vinyl cape Jawa? AFA 85 sold this week. Gorgeous. I love loose figures in what? AFA am I missing? cases. What am I This missing? one sold for $3,200. It's the vinyl cape. The vinyl cape is super rare. Uh, most Jawas came with the cloth cape. So, yeah. You guys should, should give Dino more money and see how much it takes to get him to mute me. Um, the next one. You this one was now. crazy to me. <laughs> Star Wars Vintage Collection. Recent figure, but it's a factory air they're calling it, where they put Boba Fett in a Mandalorian card. Dude, I better check my my Mandalorian. The thing about <laughs> this makes me go, how many people are able to just get a Boba Fett and put it in there and reseal it? That's what scares me. But this one sold for eight grand. This is a recent figure, sold for eight grand. There was a ton of uh, uh, Boba Fett carded figures that sold this last week for eight, seven grand, eight grand. But this is a newer one. This is from the vintage collection. This just it was crazy to me. Eight grand, 45 bids. Um, just bonkers. Super, super crazy. All right. So one of the things that we talk about on here a lot is the super posable Spider-Man. And um, there was a bunch of super posable Spider-Man stuff that sold this week. But it kind of got me thinking. Some super posable Spider-Man sell for cheap. This one sold for $89. Some sell for a lot. Uh, this one sold for, let's see here. There's another one. 325 what's the difference well you have one from 2004 and you have one from 2002 i believe or from spider-man 2 which was 2001 you can see the different cards but here's the question oh there's another offer for debo samuel 
Um, the question is, do they have, so I think one of them has more points of articulation and that's why, uh, I want to put it out to the viewers. Why does one sell for more? Is it because it has more points of articulation or is it just the carded version of it? You know what I mean? What, what, what is the, the thing that causes that, the, uh, the one to sell for just so much more money. Look at that $200 loose. Dude, where the fuck's action figure Aaron when we need him? Yeah, we're going to get him on here soon. Uh, uh, you can see some of these prices. Um, even even for $100 for the one is crazy, but the one sells for just a crap ton more. Uh, no dice. Oh, um, mm -hmm. bummer. Shit! <laughs> 344. <laughs> so here you guys go. $350 for the 2004 one. Super poseable Spider-Man figure, so... Uh, that's uh, for everybody out there to try and uh, figure out for me. That would be awesome. Here's a something crazy. So this blew me away. This was a sale of four thousand um, dollars for the Black Series lot. A lot, four thousand dollars, right? Forty two hundred dollars came with a heavy gunner, uh, heavy infantry, a regular Mandalorian. Two of the uh, special edition, what do they call these? Uh, frozen something Mandalorians. Um, a Din Djarin and a... Jeez, these offers just keep coming, don't they? <laughs> um, and a Lando Calrissian. All those sold for $4,000. Why? Which one of these is, is that much? Because none of these look anything special. These look special, but I don't know. You know, he's so here's what he's got two of the Mandalorian carbonized, uh, a heavy infantry Mandalorian, the Mandalorian from nine, the 94 one, uh, Imperial Death Trooper, a Jin Jarin, and a Death Squad commander um, for four grand. I don't get that. So uh, let's see if anybody. Uh, shout out to the super chat, Chad Cave. I don't like Star Wars disqualifier fun. <laughs> Hashtag yeah, I would, again, I would really like to see how much money we can raise to have me thrown off the channel. Um, sincerely, uh, I derive no joy in being here. And uh, if you guys can get enough money to hire my replacement, um, this would be an opportune time. So, uh, fund my replacement. Four grand oh, on that one. Let's go. That is crazy. That's bonkers to me. So let us know if you guys know why that sold for so much. Uh, all right. So some you of the other stuff. Bastards. How, give us more money to get rid of me. How about this one? Uh, we talk about muscle men. We talked about Fucking the Satan cross figure last week. This one sold for $2,500. This is the black hole sunshine muscle man. It's the Kanikumon. Kanikumon version so it's the japanese version and it came I used with that to extra data girl but her nickname was black hole sunshine and that extra piece came with this figure and you could put it in the little hole just like the satan cross figure um so this one sold for a shit ton twenty five hundred dollars for one muscle man figure so there you guys go um we've got also this is kind of cool for you uh for all of you let's see here let's do this again for all you G.I. Joe fans, I didn't realize that a grunt, a loose grunt, ah! loose, Carter, loose. Straight, it has straight arm. It, it has it this straight arm. It has the gun, the helmet, and the backpack, and the cut card, just under two grand. Get the stink out of here. Holy How crazy is that? Why is that? I didn't realize this figure sold for that much. Is this a? I mean, is this a variation? Because could be I'm a prototype. Like, is that like it a could prototype? be a variation. I, it, it could be. It could be. This seems impossible to me. This doesn't seem right. It just seems like you can buy a carded grunt for that much. That's what it seems like to me. Yeah, it That's says uh, version one grunt infantry trooper, straight arm complete, tight joints, sold for four, just under two grand for nine. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. So, um, hey, be on the lookout. All right, one of my all-time favorite G.I. Joe figures is from Brazil. It's the Cobra de Aco figure. Uh, this figure has a lot of uh, 
talk in about this figure in the G.I. Joe community. And it, this was like the holy grail for most G.I. Joe fans for the longest time. Still is f- for me. And what it is is basically a, a, a mishmash of multiple figures. It's the, G, it's the um, Snake Eyes head with a um, chrome finish. And the, not Grunt, uh, who is this body? This is the... Uh, one of the one of the first GI Joe's body that has this thing that attaches flash. to it. Fl- yeah, flash. Yeah, flash. Thank you. Yeah. Flash. So it's got the flash body and a chrome and, and then a different color. It's it's Cobra version, so it's got a Cobra. And it's Cobra de Aco from Estrella, Brazil. Usually you only find it loose. This one was carded and it sold for fifteen hundred dollars. This is back in September. I didn't huh. see it. Really, really tough figure to find in high grade any grade. So it's fucking crazy. Uh, I've never even, I didn't even know about that figure. Yeah, I love the Cobra Daco figure. Uh, here we go for all the mask fans. Uh, this is a set of masks. I thought this was a great buy if you're a mask fan. Comes with all wow. of these. It, yeah, it comes with Dude, the. Dude, Mel would have shit his pants if he'd had the opportunity to buy this. Yeah, look at all this. All of them, all the, the figures. I love the 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 Mack trucks and, and, and the, the old school Chevy. Beautiful uh, group, 355. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Um, All right, here's another interesting one. I talked about this, um, the shark-faced vehicle last week uh, that is hard to find. Well, this is the um, Target set, the battle packs, that comes with all the different ARC troopers. And if you remember back in the day when we first got ARC troopers as figures that came in the Episode 2 animated they weren't animated. They did do animated ones, but they made ones that were ARC troopers from the animated series that looked like regular figures in the Clone Wars set. Um, and everybody that was uh, Star Wars collectors at that time geeked out for that big time. I mean, just just huge. And those uh, ARC trooper figures self, sold for a lot forever. Well, then um, Target or whoever put out a battle pack where you could get them all. And uh, this one sells for about $115. So uh, I like that battle pack. Always like that battle pack. This is another cool one. So this is, uh, I I thought this is one of my all-time favorite uh, figures that people don't really know about. This is the carded Jedi Knight Luke figure that they only gave away if you were in the movie theater to see the trilogy edition uh, at the movie theater for Jedi. And uh, usually when you buy this, I've bought them. Th- I've bought three versions of this carded, and every time I get it gets to my house, the bubble um, pops off of the card. <laughs> so uh, you know, be on the lookout for this where the bubble hasn't popped off. It's really really tough to find. Uh, this one sold for about two hundred dollars Canadian with a Jesus. bunch of extra figures, which to me was a great buy. Um, you know, these are all oh, wow. loose, but it's got the Boba Fett. It's got IG eighty eight. So you could get it's got there's the the cloth uh, Jawa not the vinyl the cloth I don't see any uh, the last seventeen in here but um, still you get a Boba Fett you get the Jedi Luke and you get a Gamoran Guard original for two hundred bucks that's a pretty good deal dude hell yeah that's a steal bro right um, all right how about this one I want this give me all of this every day. Custom oh, wow. Spaceballs Dark Helmet Dude. action figure. <laughs> Why, have we ever seen actual Spaceballs figures? I don't know. That's a great question. Maybe like animated version ones of them when they did the animated series? I no, sir. So. I wasn't seeing you play with your toys, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Look how cool that is, man. That's awesome. Look at the back. That is awesome. That's your so helmet good. is so big. <laughs> may the shorts be with you so 80 bucks for that you could buy your carded uh dark helmet figure um uh, all right i think i went through most of them tonight so yeah that is the market report tales of the flipside market report for november 29th thanks for